So here was the objective, was to save space by not carrying more recovery gear than I actually need, but still have enough to get me out of most situations. And it all has to fit in one bag and be light enough so it's easy to carry. Well, Max Tracks just sent me their Bush recovery kit. And yes, everything does fit in here. And to answer the question of whether or not it's light, Well, now all special effects aside, this really is a complete kit and it's very easy to carry. It's not as heavy as having all the metal stuff that I used to have in my recovery kit before. I know complete is subjective. Everyone has a different meaning for complete and what it is that they bring. But for the recovery I've done in the past, this pretty much takes care of everything. I'm not planning on winching out an 18-wheeler that has fallen on its side. Like, nah, we're good. Now, I will go over the contents of this bag, but just fair warning, this is going to be a long video. I want to make this be like a reference guide to the Max Trax recovery system. So feel free to come back to it in the future, watch it in different sections, because I want to make sure that you get every piece of information that you need to know about the stuff that's in here. But before I do that, I do want to go over the bag because this bag is pretty awesome. Max Trax did a really, really good job in designing a bag where there's compartments for all the stuff that they offer so that it makes you find things a lot easier. All right, starting on one side of the bag, you have these two humongous compartments. These compartments were made for your soft shackles. Max Trax offers two kinds of soft shackles, the core and the fuse shackle. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's why they give you two compartments so you can separate them and you'll know which one is which. I also like that all of their zippers have these pulls on them with a bright orange tab. Sometimes zippers, if they're black and the bag is black, it's kind of hard. Where'd, where'd that zipper go? This makes it easy to find those zippers and just pull them and get this stuff open. Next to that, you have these two little pockets here. They're really designed for your Hitch 50. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Now on the other side of the bag, you have this larger compartment. It has a ghosted Max Trax logo on it. I really like that a lot. And this is where you would put your dampener. And then I also put in my gloves. And then on each side, you have these humongous pockets as well. So on one side, I got my Max Trax flags. Winch ring is in here, which we'll talk about that as well. And you also have the same on the other side. This side is empty, so if I need to build out this kit, I can add more stuff in there if I needed to. I also like that the side of these bags have this hook and loop system, so you can put your patches on there and make it really look cool. So I have one for Max Trax, I have the Max Trax Micro Crew patch in there, shout out to them. And then on this side, just some other random patches that I have. Then you have this humongous uh, handle right here and it's reinforced that way when you're grabbing this it's not going to tear at the seams although this kit is not very heavy compared to my last kit which man that thing needed to really be reinforced because i had like metal snatch blocks and metal uh bow shackles and everything well now this is see and then you also have a strap that's nice and padded so when you're carrying it on your shoulder, it won't hurt so much. Now at the very top is your main compartment. You do get this Ghosted Max Trax logo over here, which I think is just a really nice touch. But what I really like about the system is that it opens very quickly. There are no other compartments inside. It's just one big cavity that fits all of your rope and it does all fit in there nicely. And that's basically the bag, everything organized the way it's meant to be. All right, with the bag out of the way, let's jump into the contents. There is a lot to unpack here, but instead of me just kind of going through this kit, by myself for you. I figured what a better way to have someone who has been working with Max Trax for years come and walk through this with me to teach you guys about all the stuff that's in here. And for that, we turn to our Australian correspondent, 
Chris Woodrow, aka Woody. What's happening, Asia? It's good to be here, all the way from Australia. If you don't know about Woody, Woody has been instrumental in this channel of mine, like huge. He was my uh, ambassador manager, I guess you would say, over at Lightforce. Uh, he's currently no longer with Lightforce, but we have remained friends. Good friends. He is currently still sponsored by Max Tracks. In fact, he's the guy that connected me with Max Tracks and pretty much everyone else. That's what I do. I'm the broker of deals. <laughs> and I texted you that day when all this stuff came into the house. It was like three boxes worth of stuff. And I'm like, if this is all recovery gear, I don't think I can bring all of this in the vehicle, but it actually all compacts to this thing. And Woody has the exact same kit. Oh. And notice he's able to carry it. He's able to carry it. It's not heavy at all. And it's great that you can carry everything you need in just one bag. Before I had a Rome cargo box and I, and I just put everything in there. I had like a, a molly panel, I was hanging stuff up, but I, in, the, in the situation where I'm gonna need to get my recovery stuff, I'm gonna have to like open up the whole box and look for the things I need. Whereas here I can just kind of take it out of the vehicle right away and, and kind of get to work. Yeah, I was the same. Before Max Trax, I had probably two recovery bags in the Jeep at all times. One had a heap of, you know, rolled up straps and the other one was just full of shackles and hitch receiver points and pulley blocks and all sorts of stuff. And it was super heavy and it took up heaps of space. And you probably had it all like piecemealed like I did, right? Like I, I had a whole piecemealed yeah. kit of yeah, just, yeah. none of this works together. But having one kit, and knowing how to use that kit and having it all from one place, I think just makes a huge difference, right? Yeah, that's right. There's different compartments here. We're gonna start with the pockets on the outside. They call this a hitch 50. It has a um, WLL of 8,800 kilograms. This is a hitch receiver or a hitch man or recovery hitch. You'll see all the rounded edges and all the nice lead-ins to the actual shackle point. It's specifically designed um, to be used with soft shackle systems like the Max Track system. It's super light because it's made of aluminium. So I don't know what your old kit was like, but in mine, it was steel um, and it had two of them and that alone weighed, you know, several kilos. It's aluminium and a lot of people will worry about the tensile strength of aluminium not being the same as steel. This is made with a very high grade of aluminium, but they've actually taken it one step further than that in their, I guess, quality assurance. Each one has is individually serialized, and that's because they're all x-rayed. Max Tracks really take it to the level of x-raying each individual one and serializing it um, to prove that there's no inclusions or deformities or or abnormalities. If you don't have a, a recovery point on the rear of your vehicle, but you have a hitch mount, um, you would put this on your hitch. But you might say, well, I already have a recovery point there. You bring this more often times for other people. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean, yeah. There, there are people who are gonna be stuck and you might need to get them out and they may not, they're not gonna have a bump, as, as cool of a, of, of a rear bumper as you do. So it's very important to have one of these so that you can hitch this onto them and then use this to get them out. And that's what I loved about this design too. Most hitch mounts that I've ever seen, they're not balled at the end like this. They're usually squared off. This allows for a soft system, which is what you want. Speaking of which, you know, Max Trex has this thing about having going all soft. <laughs> Everything with Max Trex, it's like trying to have as little metal as possible, right? Am I right? That's, that's right. Yep, that's it's right. Nowhere in here do I have a heavy uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, snatch block. Uh, I had one before, which was just this humongous monstrosity of a snatch block that was just such a pain in the butt to carry around. Speaking of snatch blocks, so we're gonna go to my next favorite thing, which is the winch ring. Which pocket are you using for yours? So I put mine over here. It's in here somewhere, I swear. See, what would happen if we were in a situation right now? Well, I'll just use yours. Get your life together, Woody. Tell me why someone needs a winch ring. Like you just mentioned, replacing the big heavy pulley block or shackle block. And like the Hitch 50, they've gone with a very nice 
aluminium construction. And again, they're all individually serialized, all individually serialized and, and quality controlled. So this plus a core shackle is replacing the big heavy uh, pulley block, essentially. So when you're doing the double line winch pull to get double the torque out of your winch, if you're really stuck or you want to do a, a more controlled, slower uh, recovery, um, feeding this through to your recovery point. So that could be onto a H50, onto an anchor vehicle, or it could be around a tree trunk protector on a tree. This is essentially replaced that big heavy thing and this weighs grams, you know, compared to kilos or I don't know what that is in freedom units, but it's, it's, it's light. Did you just call them freedom units? Pans, feet, inches, all those freedom units, Fahrenheit. All the numbers that don't make sense, we just put into the category of freedom units. Freedom units. All right, um, this is basically all the metal that's in this kit. You know, we're talking about no, having no metal and I wanted to at least start off with metal stuff because there's only two. Random things really quickly on the back here, your, uh, your damper. Uh, that's to cause the line to drop in case of a failure. So instead of flying up in the air, it should cause it to hit the ground and uh, ar arrest any momentum. And having it be bright orange like this also has greater visibility so you know where the line is. So let's talk about what makes this system different than others. Let me just make sure I don't have anything else. And that is your soft shackle system. And for that, we turn to the core and the fuse shackle. And this is what sold me on this system. You'll notice that the core shackle is thicker and the fuse shackle, not so much. So I look at it like an electrical system, right? No matter what the circuit's for, you're always gonna put a fuse in. And the fuse is a designed weak point. If you have a short circuit, you don't want the car to burn to the ground, you just want the fuse to blow. Same in a recovery, right? If we have a failure in a, in a recovery, you know, whether it's our anchor fails or, or a component in our recovery gear fails, um, we want to be able to design the point of failure so it fails in a safe way or in a safe direction. If I'm doing a double line pull, I'm not going to put my fuse at my pulley. If there's a failure, the pulley is going to fly away or fly towards me most likely. So what I would do is I would have my anchor point from the pulley to the car and I'd use my fuse at that point. So whatever fails, fails away from me. So basically you're, the rope will shoot out away from you and not towards you. you don't, you're not gonna put two of these in one recovery. Depending on how many lines you've got running, uh, but generally you design a failure point in a way you think is safe. So usually if it's a double line winch pull for that example, you do it on the return line, which comes back to your vehicle. That way if it fails, it fails away. In a single line pull. A single line pull only has one anchor point. You would only use your core shackle uh, because any failure at that point is going to come towards you no matter what in a single line pull. If the rope failed, so if the rope got chafed on a rock or damaged, the rope would hopefully fail towards the tree. So any failure you'd hope is not going to be the core shackle. <laughs> um, so if your rope failed, hopefully your core shackle would hold on and your rope would fly towards the tree or your anchor. In this system, they actually gave me five uh, core shackles and two fuse shackles. In this kit, I'm able to fit four of them uh, on one pocket and then two of them in another. You can organize it in a way that you can grab one from each pocket and you are ready to go. So now we, we go into this territory. When I first got into recovery and when I first got into like learning about recovery, I remember going online to shop for stuff and there were just a ton of different straps. There were tree straps and toe straps and strap-ons. <laughs> you remember I asked you this stuff like, well, which one is the tree strap? Which one is this? And you said, uh, they're all the same thing. So there's only sort of two differences between the ropes. So we've got um, kinetic or static. So let's start with the static rope, which is what I have right 
here. So static rope is, you know, the versatile one that sort of becomes anything. So static means stationary or, or still. So this could be your tree trunk protector, your equalizer strap, or your toe strap. So any strap that requires a constant load, so not not a sudden load up and release, but a constant load like winching or towing. That's what static is for. Well, there's, there's several different lengths um, of this strap available. And then we also have kinetics. Let's talk about kinetics and what is the difference between kinetic and static? Like kinetic energy, it stores energy. They're called snatch snatch straps here in Australia and they're for the function of snatching. So where you have one end on a free vehicle, a vehicle that's not stuck, and the other end on the vehicle that's being recovered, and you use the momentum of the free vehicle to load a rope or strap up with energy, and that energy then sort of springs or slingshots the bogged car out of its bog, typically used on the beach in sand, but you know, equally effective, you know, in mud and that sort of thing. The reason why we don't tow with these straps is you can, under a constant pulling load, like winching or towing, it can actually damage the kinetic ability and reduce the kinetic ability of the rope over time. It's designed to have a sudden load of energy built up in the strap and then it will release it suddenly as well. It's like a giant rubber band or bungee cord. Kinetic ropes are magic. Our forerunner got a Land Cruiser out of a mud hole with kinetic rope, just snatched it. So think of it like that, it just snatched, it yanked you out of that situation. With the added benefit of kinetic energy and momentum, um, a smaller vehicle could recover a larger and heavier vehicle. Each of these are labeled, which is really cool. On the rope itself, you will see the label. And quick side note, how good is it having the Velcro straps? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I don't know how many of you out there have recovery kits and your ropes are just a tangled mess in your bag and you're just trying to find which rope is what. A lot of companies, when you buy like ropes from them, you know, they sell rope straps. This is already attached. All of these are all labeled. All of them have Velcro straps on them. All of them will tell you what the length is. Static rope uh, 10 and static rope three. And then you have kinetic rope, KR5, KR2, and KR... Three. Which ones do you have? KR2, KR5, and KR3. So what is the difference between KR5, KR3, KR2, and why would someone need to use these different ones? So the, the length is a difference. So a two meter, a three meter, and a five meter. So, you know, when you're designing a recovery, um, you, you, you have things to consider, right? Imagine if there was a bend or a corner, right? Imagine if that corner was only five meters behind you, you wouldn't use your big five meter strap because you'd run out of road before you could put tension on the rope to pull them out. But obviously, right, the longer the kinetic rope is, the more potential energy gets stored in there and gets released as kinetic energy. So if you are on the beach, I'd go straight for the KR5 because I know I can store a lot more potential energy in a KR5 than I can in a KR2. Use the longest rope you can do, but obviously not every recovery is suitable for a KR5. Sometimes you're gonna have to go a shorter rope. So if you have the, if you have the means of getting that distance to use the five, that would be the best because you're basically, the longer this is, the more energy is gets, gets stored when you stretch it. Yeah. And then you let go and boom, and then you'll be able to snatch them out. Exactly, a bigger rubber band holds more energy than a small rubber band. But that is the entire kit. That is the entire Max Trax recovery system. When you first look at it, it doesn't look like enough, right? Right. You know, when you're thinking, oh, is this, is this it? Is this is this all I need? And I think we get conditioned a lot into thinking we need more than what we do need. You know, whereas a lot of these ropes have more than one purpose. Now, here's what I'm gonna ask you. If someone gets stuck, what's usually your very first thing you're going to try? Uh, I'm first gonna try Max Tracks recovery boards. It's so quick, easy and simple. Pull the boards off, put them in front of the wheels and see what happens, right? Obviously that's best case scenario. If you've got a vehicle that's stricken or having mechanical issues, that's not gonna happen. Um, or if it's, you know, too bogged and you're unable to 
to dig the clearance required for recovery boards, that might not work either. Or terrain might not be suitable. You know, we could be looking at, you know, boulders and rocks and that sort of thing and the max tracks aren't quite enough to, to lift the vehicle over it. Then second port of call, if it's safe to do so, is gonna be the kinetic rope. Usually if I can get in front of the vehicle, I will, and I'll fit this in the rear. I'll have a core shackle on here. I'll use my kinetic rope and I'll have another core shackle on the, on the bogged car. And I'll do a snatch recovery. If that doesn't work, <laughs> then we're gonna start winching. I'd often use this in conjunction with Max Tracks recovery boards too, by the way. So that way, if I do get that momentum and pulling them up on a board, which not only lifts them out of whatever they're bogged in, but gets them onto a solid surface. So if I'm trying boards first and it doesn't work, I will leave the boards in. That way I'm pulling them up onto the boards um, and it's much safer. If I was in the situation that you're in where I'm the lighter vehicle and I'm getting pulled towards the stricken vehicle, I would use my static rope and my hitch or, or something to anchor myself to a tree or another vehicle. So if there was a third vehicle behind me, I would use them as my anchor point and then I sort of become the middleman with the winch. If, if none of that other stuff had worked, then I'm probably gonna be going straight for the double line pull, because I know it's pretty serious. Uh, so I would run out my Max Trax winch rope to the core shackle setup, hitch in the rear of the stricken vehicle, core shackle, ring, and then winch rope around the ring and back to my vehicle. And here's the thing, right? When we're using our fuse shackle, you might say, but Woody, if you put a fuse shackle in your return line, you're actually designing your line to fail towards the vehicle you're trying to rescue. So we've got to look at the risk. Um, so what's worse, having a fuse shackle, which weighs 15 grams, or having this fly through the air. Now this is light, by far the lightest one on the market, but I would, I don't want this flying because this will penetrate windshields, could really hurt a spotter or a, or a bystander, whereas this is not gonna do much damage at all. So I would still use the fuse shackle on my return line to my vehicle, even though that means designing my point of failure towards the vehicle I'm rescuing, but the risk to them is almost negligible because this flying through the air is not gonna hurt anyone really. And then, yeah, and so that was pretty much from easy zero all the way up to 100, this is a nightmare recovery. Really the best way to learn recovery is to be in that situation, right, I think, and you learn a lot by being there and trying to engineer how you're gonna get a vehicle out, where you would put certain few shackles, where would you put the core shackles and what rope you're using. And it's not really hard science if you, if you just think about it with some common sense, slow and controlled and, and safe. Yeah, the first thing you should do when you're you know, working on a recovery is just take a breath, right? There's gonna be no advantage to you rushing a recovery. You know, obviously there's some rare instances where a recovery might turn into an emergency and you wanna be quick about it. But in most instances, there's nothing to be lost from taking your time and everything to be gained. Um, and the beauty of the Max Trax kit, like you just said, is you actually get to take something that's usually an unknown. It's like you never, in, in previous systems that I've used and what you've used, you don't know where something might fail. Um, and so the whole time you're putting tension on that winch, you're sort of flinching a little bit, hoping nothing breaks. Whereas in this system, you can design the failure point. If something's gonna overload, you know what's gonna fail and you know what direction it's gonna go because you set it up that way. So if you take your time and you think about what you're doing, um, it's, a, it's a very safe system. And I think that's the perfect spot to end this because that was a very well-written speech, Woody. I was practicing that in the mirror all afternoon. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me. I am, I am, I, I have plans on bringing our Australian corresponder to my videos more often. So make sure you stick around and watch out for Woody popping up. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> Thanks, bro. You're welcome. Good to see you again. I told you this video was going to be long, but I hope that it was comprehensive. Like that was our goal to make sure that we make a one-stop shop video for you to reference anytime you need. I do want to give a big thank you to Woody for helping me make this video because he's really had a ton of experience with this gear and I'm glad he was able to kind of walk me through all the parts that Max Trax offers. Speaking of Max Trax, thank you to them for sending this kit over. I am so thankful and I feel confident now going out there that if something were to happen, I got everything I need right here. If you like this video, please make sure you smash. Actually, don't smash. Grab your kinetic rope and snatch that like button out of there. Subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell so we can let you be aware of any new videos that are coming out. And if it moves you, please support us on Patreon. It gives you access to all of our videos earlier than everyone else, as well as to any live streams that we might do. And also don't forget to follow us on Instagram at... I always forget which baptism overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time.